welcome back to my channel and welcome to card 7 in my 2017 Valentine series. Today I'm going to be using this super cute set from Mama Elephant called Otterly Adorable as well as the Sweet Things 6x6 pad by Doodlebug Designs. So I'm going to be watercoloring my images with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens today. So I'm beginning with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I've gone ahead and put that in my Misty. And then I'm inking up my images with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm using my Misty so that I'm able to stamp that down twice so that I can get a really good impression. And then I'm going to coat it with some clear embossing powder. Then I'm going to grab my heat tool and I heat that up for about 30 seconds off camera before I took it to the paper. And then I'm just going to melt that embossing powder until it's nice and shiny and black. And I'll also heat the other side so it doesn't warp the paper too much. So this set is absolutely full of adorable images, but this has to be one of my favorites. I love that sea otters hold hands so that they don't float away from each other. Um, while they're swimming on their backs or floating on their backs and I, that's what I think these two are doing. So I'm taking my 62 dark brown and I'm laying that in wherever I want my shadows to be. I'm kind of just scribbling that color along the edges and on any parts of their body that are on the other side like that hand and leg. And then I'm taking the 91 light gray and that may seem unusual but I wanted them to be kind of a brownish gray. That's what sea otters really look like in real life. They're kind of a a brownish gray color so that's one of the great qualities of these markers is that they um, they do not get ruined at all by doing this when you're done you just scribble off the transferred color and the original color comes right back to the surface you just want to make sure that you do scribble that off so it doesn't stain your nibs then I'm just gonna grab some uh, clean water and a little a number two round brush this is from the silver black velvet line and I'm just going to blend out that color, making it go softer as I go uh, towards the top of the body, towards the face and the belly. So I just pick up the color first um, from the shaded areas and kind of blend that out. And then as the pigment uh, wears off of the tip of my uh, paintbrush, that's where I will use that to create a highlight. So I'll do the same for this second little guy, but as you can see he has a little less surface area and the pigment got a little dark for me. I didn't have any contrast, so I'm just going back in with a little clean water and kind of pushing that darker pigment back a little bit to kind of make his tummy have a little highlight just like the other guy. So I'll let those guys dry and move on to the heart and for that I'm using 24 wine red to create my darkest and then blending out with the 25 pink and then again just taking a little bit of water to just carry that color over. And I sloshed a little pigment outside of the lines there so I, at first I was going to try to fix it and clean it up because I didn't want it to show on the die cut edge. But then I remembered that's the part of the heart that's going to get tucked under the sea otter's little paw there anyway. Um, so I decided to just leave it. I also added a little more clean water to their muzzles and then just lifted that off with a paper towel to lighten those up. So I'm going to create a background with a couple of Distress Ink colors. I've got Tumbled Glass, Broken China, and Peacock Feathers. And I'm going to start with the tumbled glass and I'm going to brush that in with my ink blending tool from the sides. Now I'm doing this on Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. I've mentioned before in other videos that I found that this ink blends beautifully on this surface. Um, you're not going to get quite as an intense of a color, at least it might would take you a lot longer to build up, but you get a really smooth blend. So um, now I'm just going to take that broken china and I'm going to add a little bit more of that in. And you can see right there I was showing you I dotted that right on there like hard. You could never do that on regular cardstock. It would leave a mark. But the, it doesn't leave any marks on this Bristol Smooth surface because it's kind of coated in vellum. Um, it has kind of a, um, a layer of protection that um, keeps the ink from soaking in too fast. 
So that's why it's you're able to get these really smooth blends. That's also why they're so good to use with your Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens because it doesn't allow the ink to soak um, too quickly into the paper so that you're able to pick that up with your paintbrush and move that around. So what I'm creating now is a transition between sea and sky. That's why I have the darker color at the bottom and then I'm kind of leaving the top space white to kind of look like clouds. And um, that is the panel that I will be using in a little bit. So I just wanted to make sure that I had um, a good transition. And then I'm just gonna take my distress sprayer and I'm gonna spritz that with some droplets of water. I'll let that soak in for just a couple seconds and then lift that off with a paper towel. And then I'm going to repeat this process, trying to get some larger and smaller droplets to create a really nice textured background. And I think this technique looks really good with um, water uh, images in particular, like the sea otters or whales or fish or anything like that. So I'll just set that aside to dry and now I'm going to work on the front of my card. So I use this die to cut out a window. This is the Jumbo Peekaboo Circle Window from MFT. There are two dies in that set. And then I'm going to take the largest of the Neat and Tangled Scallop dies and I'm just going to die cut the edges of that to create a nice panel. I thought that scalloped edge would um, mirror the inside scalloped edge quite nicely. And that's going to get layered over the background so you can get an idea of what that will look like in a minute. But before I do that I want to grab my MISTI tool once again because I want to stamp out my sentiment and I want to emboss it so that it matches the embossing that we did earlier on the sea otters and the heart. So I'm taking this sentiment that says you're utterly adorable and I just want to make sure that that's lined up really straight and once I'm sure that I have that I can go ahead and close the door of the MISTI and I can also use the grid on that door to make sure it is straight. And I will ink that up twice with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. You could see that the first time it didn't stamp perfectly, the second time um, was much better, so that MISTI tool is really invaluable. I don't know how I ever lived without it. And um, then I will just coat that with some more clear embossing powder and go ahead and heat set that once again. I never get bored of heat setting. I always think it's so much fun to just watch the color change. And just heating up the back as well to minimize warping. So now I'm going to take that background and figure out which part of it I want to show through the window because it's a little too large for what I need. And then I will just grab a pencil and mark where I need to cut that down. And I'll grab my paper trimmer and just trim that to size. I use the Fiskars one with the wire guide to show you where the cut marks are going to be. Included in that Mama Elephant matching die set are these two waves. So I decided to use this one on my card for today. So I'm just kind of getting an idea of where I want that to go on my background. And then I'm just going to grab some post-it tape and I'll tape that into place. Now that die is short, so if you were doing like the whole front of a panel, it would not cut it in two like mine did, but because I was using a shorter panel, um, the die was longer. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to take a little piece of cheap white cardstock. This is just Georgia Pacific cheap cardstock and I just put some tape runner on either side so that um, the sides are held down but the middle will still be free so that I can still insert my little sea otters in that little section. The die also cuts out this little sea otters paw so that you're able to put something in it. So I'm going to use the little heart and just add a little Tombow Mono Glue and then tuck that into place right where I want it. I love using this glue because it gives you a little wiggle room to be able to adjust things. And then I will add a little bit more to their backs and then I will just um, go ahead and lift that up and stick them down in that little wave so it looks like they're swimming in the water. Super cute. 
So now I've taken some Scotch 3M foam tape and layered that all over the back of my focal panel so that I can just uh, line that up over my background and when I have it where I want it, I can just push that down and pick it up, making sure that that's straight. And now I can go ahead and work on my card base. I used a piece of MFT snow cone cardstock, which is cut, scored, and folded to a standard portrait style card. So that is four and a quarter across by five and a half tall. And I'm just going to um, adhere this uh, heart print down right on top of that. Then I will add a little glue to the back of the background piece and peel off the rest of that foam tape backer sheet. And then I can press that into place right over top. I wanted to decorate the inside as well to make it extra fun for the kids that these are going to, the Cards for the Heart card drive, benefiting St. Jude's Children's Hospital and other children's hospitals as well. So I'm taking this other uh, sentiment from the set that says there's no otter like you and I'm stamping that in some Lawn Fawn Peacock ink. I'm also taking another of the otter images and stamping that out right on top. And then I will also take uh, this little like um, watermarks and I will put that on either side of him so he looks like he's swimming. And I also took these little splash marks as well. And that's going to complete our card for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please keep in mind if you are participating in this card drive that the cards do need to be mailed by probably Wednesday at the latest. That's when I'll be mailing mine um, because I do need to be received by January 31st in order to arrive at the hospitals in times for Valentine's Day. For all the info on that, please see the link in the description bar below the video. And even if you can only get a couple cards in, go ahead and do that. It's going to make some kids super happy. Here's a couple extra videos you might enjoy, and you can always click on my photo to subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye.